Welcome, Sister Susie. Welcome, welcome. Welcome. Those who are viewing by YouTube, hit that thumbs up button. Hit that share button. Amen. We're going to get into the discussion tonight. Welcome to Moments with the Apostle, a time of discussion. Amen. Hey, how you doing, Tawana? Welcome. Welcome. You should have given me a call to one of the talk. You know that. You can call me anytime. You should have my number. Whenever you like that, Tawana, you give me a call. We'll talk. We'll pray. We'll do whatever's necessary. I understand. Love you much. Listen, we're going to get into the discussion real soon. Amen. Just waiting for a few more to come on in. Facebook, Facebook I bless you. Everyone that's coming in, welcome. Welcome to Moments with the Apostle, a time of discussion. Amen. Amen. All right, we're looking forward to that. Amen. We're looking forward to that. I'm here for you. I'm always here for you. Amen. Amen. Tonight we're going to discuss the caregiver, the agency, and the aid. This is part three of our caregiver and caregiving series. We've been in a caregiving series. Amen. I'm going to turn this off because this music gets annoying to me after a while. Uh, we're going to, we've been sharing in a caregiving series. We began this series uh, two weeks ago. Amen. On a Wednesday night, and then we've shifted it over to Thursday night. Amen. And we're going to share tonight on that. And then, uh, eventually we're going to be talking. We're going to be talking uh, later after we finish this series. Uh, I don't know where we're going next. We'll probably talk about uh, depression and the individual. I don't know what I'm going to talk about next. What we're going to do? What we're going to discuss next? But uh, for now, we're, we're just part three tonight. There will be a part four, and it might be a conclusion of the matter. But tonight, uh, we've been sharing on caregiving and caregivers. We talked about. We started out talking about what the caregiver is, the responsibility of the caregiver, what they need to do. Uh, the relationships they need to have with the proper authorities, the nurses, the doctors, the and the lawyer. Uh, we talked about in uh, the first part. We talked about uh, uh, we talked about getting legal custody, so to speak. We talked about guardianship, and we talked about the power of attorney. Um, we also going to talk about um, probably in part four, we'll probably include that in part four, we're going to talk about the will, the will of the person that you're, getting, that you're taking care of, care of um, and the responsibility of the beneficiary. Um, we talked about, uh, um, and we're also going to talk about the living will. We talked about um, uh, the responsibility of the caregiver uh, we talked on um, uh, the caregiver and the hospital and the nursing home. We talked about that on last Thursday night. We talked about part two, the caregiver, the nursing home, and the hospital. Amen. And what to be looking out for, things that you can be aware of if your loved one is in the hospital or in a nursing home. Amen. God bless you. Welcome, uh, uh, Minister Deborah Austin, to Moments with the Apostle, a time of discussion. Amen. So tonight, we're going to talk about tonight. Before I go there, though, let me just uh, welcome uh, Sister Renee Pace. Before I go there, let me just uh, take a, a station identification um, advertising break, if you will. Um, uh, our minister, Deborah Austin, has a beautiful, beautiful um, uh, business. And um, she is in the business of, she is in the candle business, uh, self-care candles. I'm going to say that again, self-care candles. Uh, here is one of the candles. Let's see if we can get that in closer. Here is one of the candles that she, um, there we go. Here is one of the candles 
that she uh, provides. Uh, she has a many candles. This is one of the candles. This one is let's talk about let's talk about EU and the crush. Let's talk about EU and the crush. Um, I also have let's talk about me. Let me see if I can get that. Let's talk about me. Okay. She um uh the one I have, I have this one that is lit now. Amen. Is let's talk about uh let's talk about EU. Let's talk about EU. So she sells these beautiful candles, they smell wonderful. Um, they're very relaxing when you're studying, when you're praying, or whatever you're doing, um, you're spending time with self. And it's important to spend time with self. So I need you to do this. I Each one that is viewing on Facebook, each one that is viewing on YouTube, this is what I need you to do. I need you to go to her page, her Facebook page. Let's talk about it, Facebook page. I need you to message her. Instant message her on Facebook, amen, and inquire, purchase, and be a blessing to our minister, Deborah Austin. That's what I need you to do. I need you to purchase a candle. If you don't do that, but purchase one. I need you to purchase a candle from our minister, Deborah Austin. I'm telling you, she this, the candles are wonderful. They smell wonderful. They have a beautiful fragrance. It's not strong. It's just beautiful. And I'm telling you, when you're praying, when you're reading the Bible, when you're spending time with yourself, whether you're just doing work, homework from the office, you got homework you brought home from the office and you're working and you light that candle, I'm telling you, it just relaxes you. It brings you into a place, amen, of peace, a place of tranquility. So you need to get to Let's Talk About It Facebook page and you need to go there. And, and get in contact with Minister Deborah Austin, amen, and purchase your candles. You can instant message her on Facebook, and she will explain to you. She will let you know exactly what her business is all about. Let's talk about it and, and the self-care candles. You could also join her on Facebook. Go to Let's Talk About It. Hit that notification on Let's Talk About It. Go to her personal page. Deborah Austin, hit that notification so that you'll know when she's coming on. She has some interesting topics as well as I do. She covers some interesting topics. She has guests on with her. Amen. So you need to you need to jump, you need to run on over there. So let's talk about it. Amen. And join Minister Deborah Austin. I'm not quite sure what night she's on. I believe, Minister Austin, please put that up for me. I believe it's Wednesday night now for temporarily. Wednesday night, I believe, at 7.30 or 7 o'clock. She is on live, amen, and she has some very interesting, interesting topics that she covers. I've been blessed. I've been blessed by Minister Deborah Austin and, and the topics that she has covered. Even sometimes I don't miss them. Sometimes I miss them live. I go back and watch the reruns, and I'm telling you, she had one on that really blessed me. Uh, she was on with a minister, with a pastor, I believe she was a pastor. Uh, she's on Wednesday at 7:30 on Deborah on her on her personal page, Deborah Austin, or either the Let's Talk About It page. On go also go to YouTube. Listen, go to YouTube. I go there. Go to her YouTube page. Let's talk about it. Deborah Austin YouTube page. Go to her YouTube page and subscribe. And subscribe. All of my subscribers, those who have subscribed to me, and I think I have about three, close to 400 subscribers on YouTube. I need you, when you see this broadcast, I need you to run over there to her YouTube page and subscribe to her page. We want to get her to a 1,000 subscribers. Amen. We want to push her to a 1,000 subscribers. So get on over there. Those who are viewing my Facebook or will see this replay on Facebook, scoot on over there to her Facebook, to her YouTube page. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell button so that you'll know when she's on. We want to get her to a 1,000 subscribers. Amen. We want to get her there. Amen. And we can do it. We can do it. I am subscribed to her page. I am uh, I am also uh, I follow her on Facebook. I'm telling you, she's a blessing to the people in the kingdom of God. So get on over there. Subscribe to her YouTube page. Go on over there. Follow her on Facebook. Hit that bell on her YouTube page. So get that notification on so that you know when she's on and enjoy the discussion 
the Let's Talk About It discussions. Now, as I was saying, she had a, a pastor on one evening. I didn't catch the, the live, but I did catch the replay. And I'm telling you, the discussion on that week that I saw, it blessed my soul. So I'm telling you, you need to get on over there and subscribe to her YouTube page. Let's get let's get into this tonight. Amen. I'm not going to be long. Let's get into this tonight. I, I want to share some things with you. Amen. Amen. That you can pass along to maybe other caregivers. Maybe you're not a caregiver. Maybe you know someone who is a caregiver. Amen. Pastor Deidre Pittman. Yes, I remember that like yesterday. And it was a blessing to my soul. That particular that broadcast. All of them that she does blesses me. But that particular one with that pastor really, really blessed me. Amen. To hear another pastor talk about, amen, the call in her life. How does she get the call? And what, what, how does she feel when she got, I'm telling you, you need to go back and view that one. It was just a blessing. But let's get into our discussion tonight. Let's get into our discussion tonight. Father, we thank you for this time of discussion. We thank you, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, this is a, this is a discussion. This is not just me rattling, me talking, and me ranting. Amen. But we're going to talk at this is, a, this is a fireside chat, if you allow me to say it like that. Amen. Well, you can chime in at uh, any given point in time. I do see your comments. Amen. I will acknowledge your comments. Amen. But tonight, we're going to talk about the caregiver, the agency, and the aid. The caregiver, the agency, and the aid. Now, as I said, um, if you're a caregiver, I suggest... Especially if you're a family of more than one, amen. And even if you are a family of one, if you're, only, if you're the only child, then I suggest you get your cousins involved, get the sisters and brothers involved, amen. Talk to them, pray, pray over it, get them involved uh, with the care of their sister or their brother. Uh, if it's uh, a, 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 a child and, and the, you have adult children, I suggest you get them involved in the care of the individual that you're caring for. Now, um, if there's any way possible, and you, I suggest that I always say this, the best care, and I found this to be true because I did it myself and I'm still doing it. And my wife looks gorgeous. Those who have seen her for her birthday pictures, I've seen her on her birthday, the live, those who have seen her, with the, on the picture that I posted, God bless you, T. Brown. Those who have seen the pictures that I posted of her will can see the beauty uh, and the and the immaculate care that I have given her for her to be looking the way she looks. So I I suggest this to any caregiver: if it's any way possible, bring your loved one home, bring them home. Um, there are all kinds of programs out here. And I, if you want to know those programs, in, in, inbox me, write me at the email address. Um, I'm not able to put it up, but write me at the email address. Um, let me see if I can. Okay. Just give me, let me get this email address up. up. Um Okay, the email address is pinned right there. Okay, write me my email address and I will get the information to you of the agencies. Um, but I suggest that you bring your loved one home. Um, there, there's abundance of help you can get to take care of your loved one. Uh, there are abundance of help you can get to take care of your loved one uh, out here through the state. I don't know so much about the other states. I'm still looking and researching, but I know about the state of New Jersey. There is abundance of help you can get to take care of your loved one here in the state of this beautiful state of New Jersey, the Garden State. Uh, there is abundance of help. There are funds out there that will help you. Uh, there are things out there that will help you. I know because of COVID, some things are held up, but now they're beginning to open slowly. So there are things out there that will help you take care of your loved one. So I, my suggestion, this is just me because I did this. 
I brought my wife home after um, rehab, after spending almost three to four months in rehab, I brought her home. Amen. And I've been caring and taking care of her ever since. And it's been 13 years now that I've been taking care of my wife. So I suggest to anyone, the best care for a loved one is being home with the people that they love and around the people they love. Uh, I know when it comes to dementia, and we'll probably talk about that someone down the line. I know when it comes to dementia and it comes to certain things that it's tough to take care of them when they get to a certain stage of dementia. It is tough. But there are people out here who know how to handle people with dementia and know how to care for them at home. So the best care that you can get and the quickest healing that you can bring to a loved one is home being and being at home a place where they are familiar with a place where they are comfortable and they feel safe now why do i say that I mean, let's talk a little bit tonight about agencies home health care agencies some there are some agencies out here that are um uh, class A, and then there's some out here that are the pits, the lower pits, um, for lack of a better word, the lower pits. Um, if you decide to bring your loved one home, your first line of defense, of course, is sitting, talking with your doctor, talking with your CC, your 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 doctor that is that is attending to the loved one talking to a nurse, talking to your therapist, the therapist, if they've had therapy or in therapy, talking to the therapist, getting to know the, and then making a plan of care. That's your first thing. If you decide to bring them home, the first thing you must have is a plan of care. What do I mean when I say a plan of care? How you plan to continue the care and, and going forward on the care of the loved one. Now, Keep in mind, this plan of care will change from time to time. So, uh, or from season to season, or from month to month, it may change depending on the person you're caring about or caring for. Uh, so, after that, then you must contact an healthcare agency. Now, if you don't want to use the agency, you must go through your Medicare and Medicaid. And we're going to talk about that probably next session. We'll talk about Medicare and Medicaid. But Medicaid and Medicare offers a program called the Personal Preference Program. This program provides the finances to take care of, to pay someone of your choice, you're familiar with, you're comfortable with, someone that you know, someone that you put your loved one knows to take care of your loved one. They provide the finances. How that program works is that you have to apply it through your um, um, Medicaid nurse care or your nursing management that manage your nursing care for your loved one. You must apply through Medicaid um, and Simply calling the, the, the caseworker, your nurse uh, manager for Medicaid, letting her or him know that you would like to apply for the personal preference program, and they will do take the necessary steps to do what needs to be done and get the paperwork uh, rolling. Now, remember something, and I'm going to be saying this over and over again throughout these lives. Um, God bless you, um, uh, Pastor Greg Barnes, all the way from North Carolina. Uh, when you apply for programs, you have to stay on top of these people. You cannot just do, do, do the initial and then that's it and expect it to happen. It doesn't work that way. You have to constantly call them once, twice, three times, maybe even four times a month to uh, get the ball moving and get the paperwork moving. Because what people will do, and I'm gonna give you a little insight on office 
on what, what happens in the office, because I work in the office and I've worked in the office for almost 20 years now. Um, what people do is they get your paperwork. They throw it on top of the pile. Okay. Uh, or either they put it under the pile as being the next one in line. And what happens is as paperwork comes in, other paperwork either gets thrown either on top or on the or underneath the paperwork that's already on the bottom for the next person. So, and it just sits there. Some people just throw it on the other side of the desk or put it in, in, in the little uh, uh, paper hole, the cubby hole, and it just sits there. And, and it never gets looked at. So you have to constantly make the call and let them know that, you know, I'm, I'm still interested. Um, where, how far along am I? Where am I? What position am I holding now? How much longer will it be? All of these questions so that they, so that you can continue to get the ball rolling. Now, the personal preference program, talk a little bit about the program. Then we're going to talk about the agency, uh, agencies. Um, the personal preference program is a state run program. As I said, they provide the finances you, so, so you can pay the individuals that you decide to hire. You are actually the agency and you have the ability to hire and fire those who you would like. Okay. So if you hire someone outside of uh, a family member and you can also hire a family member as well. Um, that's, and that's the beautiful thing about this program that you can hire a family member and the family member can come in, take care of, help take care of the loved one, take care of the loved one and get paid and make some money at the same time. Okay. Um, and don't feel guilty about doing it because this is money that's been taken out of your check as you've worked and retired. This is money that's been set aside just for that purpose. So when you get to this stage of life that you can be taken care of. So, um, it gives you the ability, this personal preference program gives you the ability to take care of your loved one and the ability to hire and fire. Excuse me. Gives you the ability to hire and fire that one that you would like to hire or fire. They provide the finances on a monthly, on a quarterly basis. Um, they will tell you just exactly how much that will be there for you that you that you can work with. It can be anywhere from a thousand to three thousand um, dollars quarterly. Um, and why I say quarterly is because you have to go through the reassessments every quarterly. They they could they they have they come in and they talk with you, they reassess, make sure everything is well, go through the budget, go through everything with you, make sure you uh, you're still uh, good with doing the time sheets. And that's another thing I'm gonna get to in just a second. But they um on a quarterly the amount that they designate um for you to work with on on a monthly basis um, um, that you work with um, every month, um, you have to work the budget. You have to work the, work the budget. What do I mean when I say work the budget? You have to make sure that you have to make sure that the hours that you are allowing the individual to work, that you do not overrun or overspend god bless you uh, apostle perry that you do not overspend um the budget okay because if you overspend the budget then you have no money to pay your employee uh and that's what they are they are your employee whether it be a family member whether it be somebody outside of the family they are an employee and they need to understand even though they're family even though that they are outside of family they need to clearly understand they are an employee and now I'll explain why I say that. Um, and those who saw my live uh, this week, uh, this after, I think it was Monday or Tuesday in the afternoon, you'll understand. Monday, I think it was Tuesday afternoon, you will understand why I'm saying they have to understand that they are an employee. Now, um, they provide the finances for this for the individual. You as the employer must make sure you have to manage that, that lump sum of money 
so that you'll be able to take care of that employee the entire month, the entire 30 days, that they'll be able to be paid. You must manage the hours. Minister, uh, my son is on uh, on YouTube. God bless you. Welcome, uh, Minister McCaskill, my son in ministry. Amen. Uh, thank God for my son. Uh, so you have to you have to manage that fi that finances that that the personal preference program gives you. Um, that is, I suggest this for anyone that's going that decides to bring their loved one home. Um, and I like I said in my opening, I I, I suggest. My suggestion is the best care is to bring them home and care for them at home until such time that God calls them and God calls their number. Home care is the best care um, because love is shown. So let's talk about now. Let's talk about the agency. Let's talk about the agency. Again, as I spoke, talked about the hospital and the nursing home, you have to stay on top of the agency. Not all agencies are good agencies. You got some crappy agencies out here, for lack of a better word, I'd like to use. You got some really crappy, crummy, terrible agencies out here that will not give you the care that your loved one deserves and needs. Now, I've had some agencies, I've dealt with some agencies. I won't call the names because I don't want to uh, have no legalities. But I have dealt with an agency, amen, that they robbed me blind. They robbed me blind. Yeah, they robbed me blind. They robbed me blind. And um, because of that, I had to get rid of the agency. I've switched agencies before I got to the program I switched agencies several times. Why did I switch agencies several times? One, because of the care that I was given. Uh, two, because of the attitude that they gave me. Now, some agencies will give you this type of attitude where they can care less. They really don't care. I'm going to be honest with you, and I'm going to be transparent tonight when I talk about agencies and the aid and the home health aid. They really don't care. All they're about is getting that money from Medicaid, Medicare. That's all they want to get paid. And, and, and the money that, that, that these agencies are getting paid, the money that they're getting paid, they're getting paid double to what you're paying your caregiver. I'm going to say it one more time. They're getting paid double to what you're paying your caregiver. You might be paying your giver $12, $13 an hour. I can guarantee they're getting paid double or triple the amount of money. And the caregiver is not be getting the money they deserve to get or need to get because, because, because uh, uh, the agency is getting the majority of the money and they're underpaying that caregiver. Because they already have a set amount for the caregiver. They already have a set amount for the home health caregiver. And what they're paying that home health caregiver is not even equaling to the amount of money that Medicare and Medicaid is paying them to send that individual to you. And the individual, let's talk about, well, let me finish up with the agency first. So you have good agencies and you have bad agencies. And the good, the, the good ones are, are very rare, very rare. But the, the, these, these, these bad agencies are terrible. Their workers are terrible. They're terrible. And, 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 and why do I say this? Because I've experienced some things and I've been through some things with agencies where I've had an agent, this particular agency I had in, the first one I had in, um, I accidentally rushing out of the house and not really paying much attention as we do sometimes. When I first brought my wife home, she wasn't wearing her jewelry. And anybody that knows me knows I don't buy no cheap stuff for my wife and everything I purchased for her as far as gold is concerned and diamonds is concerned, is either a carat and a half, 18 carat gold. It's all that I purchased her. 
Um, and I had a bag, a, a, a sandwich, a bag full of her gold and her jewelry. And her diamond earrings, which are a carat and a half, are diamond earrings that took me almost two and a half years to pay. And I had this all sitting in a bag. And I ran out the house to work, running late to work, trying to get things done before I left the house, make sure everything was situated to aid at her instructions. I left the bag sitting on top of my uh, 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 floor model TV, which was my mother-in-law's. I left it sitting there and did not miss the jury until my godson called me and said to me, we were talking and he asked about her diamond earring, as I think it was. And I happened to look up and the jury was gone. Called the agency. Now watch this, listen to me very closely, beloveds. I called the agency. I reported it to the agency and they backed their own worker. Oh, they said to me, and I quote, I don't think it was our worker. Maybe it was somebody that you had in your house. Now, anybody that knows me knows, and Apostle Perry has been with me, been, been in my house, and he's been here and spent time with me in my house before he left to go to, to move to North Carolina. He spent time and he knows my house is on lockdown. Nobody's allowed in and nobody's allowed out. Nobody wants well, to out, but nobody's allowed in when I'm not home. My And my instructions to any worker, Anybody that worked for me, my instructions are my door is never to be open when I'm not home. I don't care if it's the president of the United States. That door doesn't get open. So I knew it wasn't anybody on the inside because there was nobody here at that time but the home health care aide. Not only did they steal the jury, they stole the camera. I had a digital camera that I had purchased to take pictures during the time my wife was in the hospital for documentation purposes. Uh, and all those pictures, thank God I had them on another device. Um, they stole the camera. That only did they steal the camera. I, I fired that, I fired that agency, hired another agency, sent me somebody else. They wind up stealing my, my wife's North Face coat with my rent money in the pocket. I had food missing, food stolen out of my deep freezer, my little freezer, my refrigerator freezer. I've had canned goods stolen out of my out of my cupboard. These are the kind of things, and I want to make people aware that these things happen. These are the kind of things that happen with some of these home health care agencies. And what they do, they back their people. They say, of course not, not ours. They wouldn't do that. Well, of course, I've had to make a police report during that time. I made a police report, um, had to, they got the detectives involved and everything, but never heard anything else after that concerning it, uh, which is, you know, God knows who did it. God knows where it is and God knows who has it. But I shared that to say this, you have to be careful of the agency that you have in your house. Do your homework. Let's say you're going to hire, let's say you're going to hire um, uh, Wind of Mercy Home Health Care Agency. That's just a prestigious name. Now, if it's out there, uh, let me make the disclaimer. If it is out there, it has nothing to do with you. If that's if they're the agency by that name. Um, Wind, let's say Wind of Deliverance Health Care Agency. Uh, and you decide, you're looking at this agency, you're, well, say you're going to call them, maybe you decide to hire them. Your next line of defense is to go to the Better Business Bureau on their website. Do your homework. See if there's any complaints against them. Go to the, uh, um, the Commerce. See if there's any complaints against them. Go to the Board of Health, the National Board of Health, and your local Board of Health. Go there. See if there's any um, um, complaints against them. All this information is public information that you can get. Do your homework before you allow an agency in your home to take care of your loved one. 
I'm, I'm, I don't want to get biblical tonight, but I will say this much. The Bible says, know those who labor among you. God, that's what the scripture tells us. We got to know who's around us. So how do we know who's around us when it comes to an agency? We got to do our homework. Better Business Bureau, the Chamber of Commerce, uh, of the, the Board of Nursing. Go to the Board of Nursing and investigate. See if they got any char had any charges. See if they've had any discrepancies. See if they've had anything against them negatively that may or may not impact the care on your loved one. All agencies are not good agencies. Now, you got some really good agencies out here. I wish I could call some names of these next some of the ones I've dealt with, but I don't want to get and then you have any problems or have any legalities. But if you want to know, email me. Email me. I see the request when they pay. Email me. But but so to know the agency that you're getting ready to bring in, because anybody that you bring in to care for your loved one impacts their life. Now, one of the things I one, another thing I like to say tonight, advocate as well, is that when you before you bring an agency into your home. Or, in, or if you go with the personal preference program and you bring someone that you really don't know into your home, one of the things I suggest you do, I've done it and they're up and running, is to put a camera in your house. Close circuit the camera. Put a closed circuit system in your house. And they are reasonable. God, God, welcome, Robert Scott. They are reasonable out here. Now, you can get them for as little as $100, $150. Sometimes um, Amazon has them for $150, $125, $130. $130. And install a closed circuit camera system in your house. I have one in my house. I just, the other day, because of an incident with my home health care, care worker, and now I want to put this out there publicly again, uh, son, I want you to put this out there again. I'm looking for someone again to take care of my wife. I'm looking again. I need someone to take care of her. So now I'm looking again. Um, 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 uh, Minister, Minister McCaskill's son, I'm looking for somebody again to take care of the wife. Um, so put a camera in your house. I suggest this. Put a close circuit camera in your house. It's illegal to put them in your bathrooms. You cannot put them in your bathrooms. Let me drop that disclaimer real quick. Put them in your living room. Put it in your kitchen, your hallway, your bedroom. So you can see the movement of your health care giver. My house, I have a camera in my bedroom. I have one in my kitchen. I have one in my hallway. And I have one in my bedroom. I have one, two, three, I have four cameras in my house. About to get two more because there's certain areas I cannot see. And if you're going to get that type, if you're going to get a system, if you're going to get a system, make sure you get a system that is Bluetooth um, um, and that can be put online so you can, you can if, you have, if you have to go be at work, you're in the supermarket, wherever you are, you have the ability to see your house and see what's going on. Because I'm telling you, some of these home health days, they're sweet as pie, but they're evil as the devil. They're evil as the devil. They will abuse your loved one, and you'll never, you don't have, if you have no camera in your house, you'll never know what's going on. And cameras also will document day by day activity. So that there's no way anyone can say, I didn't do, I didn't touch, it wasn't me. I got you on camera. Smile, you're on candid camera. So, so um, when you deal with these agencies, look them up, investigate them, see what kind of track record they have. Uh, now, I mean, I'm almost, I'm almost done. Okay, I don't know who this individual is 
on my YouTube, I, I, on my YouTube page, but they're about to get blocked. Yeah, bless the name. Y'all just give me one moment. Because this devil is alive tonight. It's about to get blocked and they don't even realize it. Give me one minute. Let me just. Okay, son, you are my moderator for this, for my YouTube channel. I place you there as a moderator. I don't know who this individual is. Okay, son, you are my Okay, there we go. Now, sorry about that. I had to deal with that um, that craziness. Um, devil's all trying to do something. Okay, but as I'm now, where was I? Yes, um, agencies. Uh, so, so when you are dealing with agencies and you are dealing with cameras, that's what I was talking about. There we go. Thank you. I I do have cameras in my house, and that's one of the things I advocate that I suggest that any family does if they are um, going to have an agency in or any individual taking care of their loved one, put a, put a close circuit camera in your house. They're very reasonable. They're not expensive at all. You can install them yourself or have someone install them for you. And, and you make sure you get the type, as I said, that you can monitor on your phone. And you can see on your phone no matter where you are um, by way of internet. They, that, they're out there. And uh, they're reasonable. And I, I suggest you purchase them. This way you can keep an eye. Because some of these uh, home health aides get abusive. They get verbally abusive. And some of them will get physically abusive. I was looking at a, a video. Um, I believe it was Sunday. I think it was the video Sunday. I was looking at you know, Sunday, either Monday. Sometimes I was looking at this video. And they were the, the, the caregiver. Uh, and they were in a nursing home was beating this old, older Caucasian lady and then dragged her out of her chair onto the floor and dragged her by her legs wherever. And that's where the video stopped. Baby, if it was me and they tried that nonsense with my wife, somebody would be coming to get me out of jail. I promise you that. Abuse is so prevalent nowadays even with family members, some family members can be abusive because they don't have the patience and, and, and the stamina to deal with the situation. And, and so make sure that if you're going to have people in caring for your caregiver, for your person, put a camera in, especially if you have an agency that's coming in and you're not home and the only person that's in your home is a home health care worker and your loved one. Put a camera in there so that you can see um 
So you can see it's exactly what is going on. Okay, um, so investigate your agency. Go on the, the go on the internet, look them up. State, go to the state, look them up. Go to the Better, Better, Better Business Bureau, the BBB, look them up. Your chamber, your your national chamber of commerce, or your chamber of commerce, look them up. See what kind, of, see what what kind of discrepancies they have against them. See what kind of uh, grade that 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 the uh, that has been given them. <laughs> Davina, don't start. Don't start. Okay. Uh, don't start, Davina. Um, make sure that you know what you're dealing with when it comes to these home health care agencies because everybody is not honest. They look honest. Uh, they, they look honest. They, they think they're honest. They come and they, 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 they and, and, and just like the individual I have right now, and my, my, my daughter is on, um, individual I have right now. When I first hired her, she, she was, she was okay. And she looked, she, she, she was doing the job and, 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 you know, she was, she was nice. She was kind, but just Monday that leopard showed his spots. Mm -hmm. And showed his behind. And I'm telling you, as I said in my live on 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 on, 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 on Tuesday, as I said in my live on Tuesday afternoon, I know I'm saved. Son, I know I'm saved. With all the fiber in me, I know I'm saved. Saved by his power divine. Saved to new life sublime. Life now is sweet and my life is complete and I'm saved, saved, saved. I know I'm saved. And had I not been saved, Mr. McCaskill, you'd become bailing me out of jail on Monday. I went through a situation. And I shared it to say this. You don't know a person until you start to work with them or you're around them and sooner or later they're going to show their spots mm -hmm. but this preacher hey i know i'm saved i don't care what nobody says y'all can say what y'all i don't care what folks say, can say what they want to say about me now i know if i had never known it before not, not, not that i didn't know it but i know show sure enough now as they say down south show sure enough I'm sure enough saying. Because what I, what I endured and went through on Monday, I know I'm saved. You can walk up on me the way she walked up on me on Monday and got away with it, and got by with it. You, you're saved. I know I'm saved. And her life was saved. So, so know the individual that you are dealing with. Know who you're dealing with. Talk to you if you if you if you're hiring a, a spirit wind deliverance healthcare agency, and that's just hype. That's just a fictitious one. I disclaimer. I don't know agency by that name, but if you hire the agency, say so you're hiring the agency. Not only investigate the agency, but investigate the individual that they send to you. Get their name. Go to the board of nursing and look and, 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 and inquire about the individual. I hired Janet Martin, and uh, I need to know Janet Martin. Uh, she, she's my home health care agency. I need to know the shit. Is there anything against her? Is there anything... You got to know who's who's in your house. You need to know who's taking care of your loved one. Because if your loved one is defenseless and they cannot take care of themselves, bless your heart. God bless you, Minister Willie Briggs. I mean, Pastor Willie Briggs. Let me correct that. Pastor Willie Briggs. Amen. All the way from North Carolina or Virginia. Amen. 
you don't, if you don't know who, who you don't know who's the individual is taking care of your loved ones. And if you they're left if they're left there, if they're left, if your loved ones left in care of them and they cannot and they're defenseless and they can't defend themselves, you don't know what the individual is doing. So you need to know if this individual has had charges on them before. You need to know if this individual was fired from another agency and why they were fired from another agency. All of this you need to know. Now, this particular individual that I have right now came with good reference. But they showed their spots, their natural behind. Yeah, I said it. Their natural behind. That's why I know I'm saved. So you need to know who's working with your loved one. You need to know the agency, the score on this on the agency, what kind of score, grade score they have with the uh, um, uh, board of nursing, where they're scoring at the state, and you need to know this individual that they send to you. Contact your board of nursing. Inquire because every home health health care agency and every home health care worker, let me say that have got to be licensed. They must be licensed and their license is public record. And you have the right as the caregiver to inquire and to ask for a copy of that individual's license to make sure that they're like you, you, you even ask the individual if they're honest enough, they will show you their license. But if they ain't honest enough, you got the right to go to the state and find out if they're licensed. Every home health care worker, even the ones that work in the office and the agency, because most of those people that work in these agencies are licensed nurses. You have the right to ask for a copy of their license. It is public record. And if they say, well, I'm not giving it to you or they deny it, I would walk away and I would I would be like David. I would hightail it and run and find me another agency because they're hiding something. So what am I saying tonight? As I, as I get ready to end this. Investigate your agency. Investigate your worker. If it's somebody you don't know. If you go with the personal preference program in the state. And you hire somebody you don't know. Get references. Have them give you references. And then contact their references. That's the mistake I made this time. I did speak to one lady who, who recommended her, and she re highly recommended her. And I just I went with it at the time because I was in a dilemma. I needed someone to come in right away. So, so what I'm saying to you tonight, beloved, when you have a loved one that is ill that is defenseless, that can't take care of themselves, make sure you bring someone in. Make sure you cover your bases. I, and I strongly urge you, put a closed circuit camera in your home. And they even have them with you. They have them small enough. You can even put them in the nursing home. If you have to put a loved one in a nursing home, they're in a nursing home and you're preparing to bring them home, you can put one even in their room and still see it on your phone. They have them. And it is not illegal. As long as you post it on the wall. This room is under surveillance. Now you don't have to post it in your own house. That's your home. But if you post if you If you bring a camera into a facility. I believe you have to post it somewhere. 
and let people know that that room is under surveillance. Now, some people don't do it, and I'm telling you, I've seen some, I've seen some uh, crazy stuff online with stuff that was caught because of, of by cameras in their loved one's room. So tonight, I pray that I've given you some valuable information. We talked about the aid. We talked about the agency. Know your aid. Know the person that you care has caring for your loved one. Investigate their background. Get the references. If they're coming from an agency, request their um, license. You have that right. You have the right to request. I'm, oops. You have that right to request the, the license of the agency that you're dealing with and their background information and their references. You can go publicly with it. You can go to your your website and go to your board of nursing and and, and, and request a copy of the agency's licenses. Um, the, uh, you, you can go to the state and request a copy of the licenses, uh, any information that you want. It's all public record. It is all public record. You can request it. And according to your request, it can be granted. So if you're caring for a loved one and you, you're looking to, you're caring for somebody, please be careful, be vigilant um, in, your, in your caregiving. Know who's in your house. Know who's taking care of your loved one. Investigate them. Get references before you hire. Excuse me. Get references before you hire. Get references before you hire. I pray I help somebody tonight. I'm getting ready to sign off now. I'm getting ready to leave the sign off. Um, I pray that I've helped someone tonight in the information that I've given you on tonight. This is some of the stuff that I encountered, some of the stuff I've had to do and still doing. Um, next week, next Thursday night, we're going to continue our caregiver caregiving series, uh, the series but uh, number four, series four, and we're going to talk about Medicaid and Medicare and what you are, what your loved one is eligible for um, on next week. Uh, we're going to talk about that on next week. Um, and we'll see where we go from there. Okay. I'm, I'm Thank you for joining me tonight on uh, Moments with the Apostle, a time of discussion. Thank you. Thank you for joining me on these series. Those who have been on every series, thank you so much for joining me on these series. Those that are joining me by Facebook, thank you so much. Those who are joining me by YouTube, hit that thumbs up button on YouTube. Hit that bell. Amen. Hit that bell on YouTube so that you know exactly when I'm coming on. Hit that bell. Amen. So you know exactly when I'm coming on. Um, those that not that on YouTube on Facebook, if you're not following me, follow me. Um, I did see a friend request and I will answer that request. I know who you are. Um, you need to write me my email address as posted on, on my uh, Facebook. This is Holy Ground 62. This is Holy Ground 62. You can write me my email address and uh, any inform whatever information you'd like to have or you need, uh, write me my email address. I will I will make it available to you. Um, if the person want more information on the personal preference program, I will make the I will make the link available to you. You can go there on that link, but you must go through your your case manager, your uh, nurse manager, for your loved one. God bless each and one tonight. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. I it, um, and uh, I'm about to go now. I'm hungry. I know the wife is hungry. We did a dinner time in my house, and I'm about to leave you and chow down. God bless you. Thank you so much. Join me next week. Amen. Join me next week. Thank you so much, Minister. Uh, my son, Minister McCaskill, Lady McCaskill. God bless you, each one of you all. Um, you can still sow into my wife's life. It is still her birthday month. If you can't sow into her, give her, give her a gift and sow it to her. You can do so. Money sign NJ Apostle D. Money sign NJ Apostle D. You can still bless her for her birthday. The month ain't over yet. We're celebrating the whole month. We had a glorious, glorious celebration on last Sunday. 
this Sunday. God bless you, uh, Mr. Desmond Kearney. This Sunday, we're going to be winding up. If the Lord allows us, we're going to be at Maggiano's this Sunday, still in celebration of my wife's birthday on this Sunday. Uh, so if you want to join us at Maggiano's, you're on your own financially. It's in Hackersack at, and uh, in the square, in the square, Riverside Square, Riverside Square Mall, Maggiano's is there. Uh, so we, we're going to be at Magic Annals. So if you want, again, if you want to bless the wife for her birthday, money sign NJ Apostle D, you can do so and bless her. Amen. I guarantee it will go to her, not me. Amen. And you can still continue to bless Lady Towns. Um, those who saw the picture on Facebook, amen. That was her birthday picture in a beautiful pink and her beautiful hat that she had on us on that on last Sunday, Resurrection Sunday. Thank you so much. God bless each one of y'all tonight. Amen. Amen. Uh, God bless each and every one of you all tonight. It's been a pleasure to do these lives. Um, a long time coming. I'm finally able to get to the release to do them. So next Thursday, we're going to be right back here, uh, Facebook, YouTube. And we're going to talk about Medicaid and Medicare on next Sunday. And um, um, give you some valuable information. Um, on next Sunday on Medicare and Medicaid and what they do to individuals and how they try to discourage you so that you'll give up and won't give what your loved one needs, but your loved one is eligible for it. We're going to talk about all that on next Sunday, on next Thursday night. Thank you. God bless you. Good night until we meet again on, on next Thursday night at 7.30. All of you on YouTube, on Facebook, Thank you so much and good night 